Hello, welcome everyone. I'm Maggie Jacqua. I'm the content director of Whole Foods Magazine, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar. Thank you all for joining us. Today, we're going to be learning about five ways to maximize your marketing budget and ROI in 2021. Today's presentation features Kelly Stewart. A little bit about Kelly. She is the vice president of marketing at Sampler, and she is one of the company's earliest employees. With almost a decade of experience in brand strategy and, and uh, communications for consumer packaged goods, Kelly joined Sampler to help build the team's marketing foundation. Now, since joining Sampler, Kelly has helped develop and implement Sampler's b 2 b to c brand voice through the creation and amplification of digital content. Kelly has played an integral role in helping Sampler win industry awards and secure press coverage with top publishers such as TechCrunch and AdAge. Over the next hour, Kelly is going to explain how you can transform your product sampling tactics into a comprehensive 360 view of your consumer. And she's going to fill you in on how that can maximize your ROI this year. So we're looking forward to that. Before I turn the stage over to Kelly, a few quick housekeeping details. You will be able to ask Kelly any questions that you have at the end of the presentation. So go ahead and submit your questions into the questions panel as they occur to you. And we'll get to those after Kelly wraps up her talk. If you have any technical issues, submit those to us in the chat box and the behind the scenes team here will assist you with that. Also, so you know, this webinar will be available on demand so you can review the information again and you can share it with your colleagues. So we invite you to do that. And now I would like to invite Kelly to the stage to join me. Hi, thank you so much for that intro. Hey, it's great to have you here, Kelly. I am looking forward to this talk and I'm gonna back away and turn things over to you now. Perfect, thank you so much. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us today or joining me really uh, to talk about the five ways to really maximize your marketing budget and return in 2021. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Kelly Stewart and I am the VP of Marketing at Sampler. Um, if you've never heard of us before, no, no biggie, uh, we're a digital sam product sampling company uh, and we help CPG brands all over the world digitize their sampling efforts um, and actually deliver physical product samples to digitally targeted consumers. Uh, so once again, I'm super excited to be here with you today, and uh, we're going to be talking through a whole bunch of ways to maximize your marketing budget and return this year. So as we know, um, the industry is really transforming in ways, uh, as is the rest of the world right now, um, that even the most seasoned marketers couldn't have predicted. It's been a pretty crazy year uh, with a whole bunch of curveballs for marketers. Uh, and so what we're really going to do is we're going to take a look at some of those factors uh, really contributing to the change. And most importantly, discussing ways that we as marketers can really adapt in this changing CPG landscape um, and especially maximize impact, which is super top of mind right now. So before we get started, uh, I figured it would be really good to maybe just learn a little bit more about everybody here in the audience who's joining us today. Uh, so I'm just going to launch a couple of poll questions to get us started. Uh, and so you'll see that pop up on your screen here. The first question is, have you ever leveraged product sampling to run marketing campaigns before? I'll just give you a few seconds uh, to, to log your answers there. Well, it looks like a lot of you have before. Great. Perfect. It looks like about 61% of you have before. Super helpful. And so uh, second question will be uh, popping up on your screen in a moment, which is which of the following really describes, uh, just a second, there we go. Which of the following describes your line of work or, or your field? Great, see a lot coming in now. Perfect. Lots of brand marketers here today. Great, okay, so we've got a pretty good mix today, which is awesome. And so um, I definitely wanted to make sure I, I understood who is here today before I do dove into uh, today's tips, but this will be applicable across the board for, for everyone in every field. 
Um, so thank you so much. And then as mentioned, uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them throughout and then we'll get to them at the end. Um, and we're also going to be using the sampler talks hashtag on social if you want to get in into the conversation online, uh, feel free to go there we will be we'll be doing some posts there as well. So without further ado. Let's get into it. So the world as we know as we know it has really undergone such a substantial change since the very beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, um, the pandemic has caused such extreme and rapid changes, um, of course, globally across the board, but especially in consumer behavior, um, that traditional models built on last year's purchase behavior are just no longer accurate. Uh, the CPG industry in particular has faced so many unique challenges during this time, um, which I'm sure everyone here can attest to. Um, and truly so much, you know, unexpected volatility in demand, um, you know, really difficult stuff with the physical environment and in-store, um, massive supply chain disruptions, all of this going on while under pressure to get products onto shelves and keep employees, retailers and consumers happy, uh, which is a whole lot at once. Uh, the pressures CPG brands are currently facing uh, are primarily driven by six uh, macroeconomic factors. Uh, and so I figured it would be a great place to start to kind of look into those in a little more detail today. So the first one, of course, is supply uh, chain pressures, which I, I'm sure all of us are feeling right now. Um, definitely, definitely the big headline here. Uh, we know that many manufacturers are currently in defense mode. They're not spending discretionary dollars, mainly due to the fact that many of their costs in their day-to-day -day business have increased by as much as 50%, uh, which is of course massive. Uh, so things like transportation, container shipping, for example, um, have increased between 25 to 50%. Packaging and commodity costs like lumber and wood, wood pulp, I'm sure we've all heard of, um, have skyrocketed, skyrocketed, affecting the cost of paper and aluminum, um, continuing to affect the cost of cans or resin, affecting the cost of plastic. Um, brands have seen other fixed costs go up, uh, with one of the highest being labor wages. So things like COVID pay, um, overtime, all these are coming into play here. And this is just under one of these factors. So material and labor shortages have really, really impacted these increase in costs. Uh, second on the list is really retailer pressures. So at the same time, retailers are nervous. They're, they're putting a lot of pressure on brands and manufacturers. Uh, and that's because they've been faced with significant challenges over the past year, uh, year and a half actually now. And the small margins these businesses have, uh, every penny that their customer spends is super valuable. Uh, in addition to this, you know, the massive increase in online shopping. Uh, there's more transparency in pricing. Uh, the consumers have more power than ever to price compare when they shop um, and more time to research a brand. And so the number of trips to stores has also decreased while our average basket size has gone up by almost 20%. Um, each and every trip is in increasingly important uh, and, and really, really, really impactful for retailers right now. Uh, so adding on top of that, Consumers are switched to new brands during the pandemic due to limited availability. Uh, and, you know, at that time, so, you know, these retailers realized that they could get by with fewer SKUs potentially uh, on their shelves. And inevitably, they are placing their priority on their own private store brands. So, you know, health and safety obviously has been huge, huge investment uh, for these retailers, everything from sanitizing carts. Uh, you know, wiping down conveyor belts, installing plexiglass shields, all of these are incremental costs that really add up and really continue to shrink that margin for retailers um, on top of any other safety measure you can imagine in the, your recent trips to the grocery store. Uh, next up, marketplace uncertainty. So, you know, there are without a doubt, you know, I hate this word unprecedented. I know we are all sick of it. If only we could eliminate it from the dictionary at this point, but it's true. It's truly, you know, no one has gone through this in the way that we are right now before in our lifetime. And there's no way to accurately forecast the future. Uh, many brands right now are afraid to change price, to change promotional strategies, which we know can be very costly. Um, you know, really hard to predict what the impact can be. So we know that many new products that were in the works were that were capitalizing prior to the pandemic, you know, snacking on the go, rapid meals, these may pivot, these may not land the way they would have prior to the pandemic, or they might, we really don't know yet. And so brands are holding, you know, off on the risk of cost and innovation, just trying to figure it out. 
On top of that, changing consumer trends, um, you know, trying to keep up with the ever-changing consumer needs over the past year and the trends. Um, some categories have been impacted more than others, uh, you know, even with the reopening happening currently right now, slowly um, in the US, a little bit more delayed in Canada, but still getting there. Um, it, it's not quite back to normal. It's going to take a little while to get there. And so, you know, all these impulse categories, everything has, everything's had to pivot. Everyone's had to pivot their strategy on a dime um, very, very quickly and pivoted many times over the past year and a half. It keeps changing. So staying in touch with those consumers is so important right now to understand how they're feeling. Um, on top of that, on, you know, growth expectations, you know, um, some certain categories saw huge surges in 2020, um, and this year is a little more unpredictable. It's hard to, you know, map and figure out what the incremental growth will be for you in sales this year, comparatively to last year, which was a bit of an ad hoc year. Uh, that's really, really hard to nail down a plan uh, and an output, really. And so finally, you know, back to the old normal or, you know, quote unquote, old normal. What, what is that? With vaccine rollouts and reopenings, uh, you know, all around the world, we're starting to see some resemblance to our old normal, but we don't know what that will be yet. And we don't know the comfort level of consumers yet. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, developing as we go along. Um, and there's so many predictions in the industry right now that certain traditional tactics like in-store sampling are gonna be less effective than they were before the pandemic. Um, there was a, there are some really great studies about you know uh, Costco reopening their in-store sampling. While the diehard Costco fans might feel comfortable with it, a lot of people really don't. Uh, and and what does that look like? It, probably more costly for the individual servings to make people feel safe right now. So you know there's a lot of health and safety concerns around that. Uh, not to mention the increase in online shopping. So the number of people in store has decreased. And so you know these are a lot of factors happening at once. Having survived the initial impact of COVID um, and facing the above challenges, brands are now beginning to pivot to recovery and future-proofing their businesses for really long-term competitiveness. So how do you remain impactful and efficient as you transition and evolve into a, a new post-COVID era? So I, I personally have been with Sampler now for about six years, and we work with over 400 CPG brands all over the world on their marketing efforts. Um, particularly digitizing their sampling programs. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through how a digital product sampling program can help combine multiple pieces of your marketing mix into one centralized platform uh, and make every single one of your marketing dollars go longer um, or further rather, and you're really getting more bang for your buck. And so if you've never ran a digital sampling program before, um, I can just quickly go through what that looks like for you. And so, um, so from there, digital product sampling program allows you to send physical product samples to digitally targeted consumers, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So how that works is you can actually, after creating an account as a consumer, uh, you fill in a diagnostic questionnaire uh, with information, including demographics, dietary preferences, lifestyle habits, and other any information that's that's necessary for targeting. Um, once once that happens, they're actually matched with any samples that match the answers they have given um, and best match their unique lifestyle. Which then they can handpick. Uh, they can handpick and get them deliver. Uh, handpick which ones they want actually, um, and then the ones they select will be delivered right to their home. Uh, and so during a sampling program, they're able to opt into a brand's mailing list for future communication answer post sampling surveys to provide ratings and reviews uh, and their unique feedback on the product. And so, uh, you know, one thing that's really important here is that opt in, they still have that power uh, as they would in in-store sampling to walk up and make that decision about which sample they'd like to try, except in this version, it's way more targeted. You're getting um, a similar experience or uh, targetability that you would with programmatic advertising. You're getting that piece of your marketing mix, but you're also getting a physical product sampling into their hands, um, which also is you know, eliminating waste. You're only putting it in the hands of people who are much more likely to convert, which right now with budgets tight is more important than ever. And so if we look at what a digital sampling program can really do. Um, it does go far beyond that free product trial that in-store sampling is so focused on right now, right? It's, uh, it's a way to build the infrastructure that enables lasting, data-driven, and most importantly, profitable relationships with consumers. So, you know, the unified approach to sampling lets you optimize your marketing spend and boost operation efficiency 
uh, by you know, reaching your highest value consumers with advanced audi audience targeting and capturing and actioning first party consumer data. Uh, growing your email database for personalized remarketing, which is huge right now. When the world does open, you want to have the contact information of people that really have interacted with your brand and care about your brand uh, to nurture that relationship to brand advocacy. Um, grow, you know, collecting ratings and reviews to drive sales. That's so important right now as we discuss, you know, um, there's been brand switching happening just strictly due to lack of supply. Uh, you know, you need to step forward within your category and have that consumer backed review or rating to show just how great your brand is. Uh, on top of boosting digital ad effectiveness with sampling CTAs, um, I'm sure everyone has experienced uh, crazy increases in CPL costs, CPC costs, um, and just so expensive to run digital ad campaigns right now. Not to mention that it's extremely saturated. Everyone's trying to do the same thing, uh, making you know your ad that you're paying good dollars for uh, get lost in the shuffle. And so you know all CTAs are the same. It's always learn more. Um, but what if you could put a sample behind that? That's really something that jumps out to a consumer who's scrolling through their feed. The fact that they could have that experience of interacting with you digitally and weaving that physical sample into it as well that get to, gets delivered to their home for no effort really is huge, huge to a consumer. And so let's go through that in, in more detail. Um, not all consumers will provide the same value to your business. Uh, and you know, with the added budget pressures face, that we're being faced with today, it's obviously you know, more important than ever to direct your efforts and of course your dollars to those high value consumers. Um, these are the ones that are going to provide the biggest return for your brand. Um, you know, how do you target them? How do you reach them? And how do you keep this ideal consumer? All three important pieces. Conversion is just one piece. You want to keep them um, for as long as possible. So once again, that brand advocacy. So the beauty about digital product sampling is that it really allows you to choose from over 700 segments, uh, include everything from region, uh, how often they exercise, what type of hobbies they have. Uh, so the targeting possibilities are really quite significant. Uh, you can target against very specific segments like demographics, care and beauty, uh, food and beverage, personal interests, health and fitness, and even shopping habits. Uh, so from there, with every sampling program you run, the platform gets smarter, helping you identify consumer uh, demographic insights that you may not have considered before. Uh, so for example, if you initially started your program targeting consumers with a different with different skin concerns, uh, you may be able to pinpoint consumers who are experiencing, uh, experiencing fine lines that, as being more likely to repurchase your product. That is invaluable information for remarketing. Um, and at Sampler, we'll, we're able to identify these key sub-segments for you uh, and actually come up with recommendations as to how you can continue to target those consumers to ultimately bring them closer to their next purchase. And so, you know, building and reaching your highest value audience, uh, that, once again, this is so important to reach the right consumer to drive those conversions. Um, the real key to success is leveraging data and technology to capture and retain your highest value consumer with relevant messaging, um, you know, leading to optimized marketing spend and long term payoff. And I think that's the really big thing right now is as the world opens, we're drawn towards more experiential marketing, but you aren't going to get the same data or measurability with experiential marketing that you are with digital marketing. Um, you know, think about the things that the practices that have been set up over the last year and a half where you were forced to lean into digital advertising. You know exactly what you got out of every cent spent there. You can track the whole process from start to finish. That is extremely difficult in an in-store sampling experience, for example, or really most experiential marketing activations. And once again, when you really want to know how far every single dollar in your budget is going right now, having that measurability is so important important so that you know exactly where your dollar is going and how impactful it is to your overall strategy. So number two, uh, the other major benefit uh, to discuss today is really the ability uh, for you to take on a more direct to consumer approach and build a relationship with your consumers. Uh, something obviously traditionally been in the hands of retailers. Uh, so, you know, talking about capturing and actioning first party consumer data 
that is something that's going to be lost when you move back to experiential marketing. Uh, you aren't going to have that one-to-one -one relationship directly with the consumer. It's a lot hard to foster a relationship and even get the contact information of anyone who's tried your product. Um, getting that CRM data is vital in helping to grow your, your not only your email database, but also just your, your brand advocates, your customer base and building that loyalty with them. And so if we start looking at, you know, all this stuff around Google's recent announcement on its plan to stop supporting third-party cookies in Chrome, starting in January, 2022, not that far away. Uh, and, you know, we've been traditionally used, it's been traditionally used by advertisers to execute um, targeted marketing campaigns and been a really, really big piece of that. So this change is gonna have a massive impact on digital advertising. Uh, especially for CPG brands. Um, this, these kinds of changes in platforms and uh, regulations are really driven by the rise of consumer awareness and privacy concerns. And so it's bringing to light, you know, this need for consumer or CPG brands to move into back into the driver's seat and create those direct relationships with their consumer. Um, consumers are smarter than ever right now. They, they are very, they know when they're being kind of tracked online and they want it to be a mutual relationship uh, built on trust and they want to opt in to hear from you rather than feeling as though they're being followed. And so for any brands that are, you know, have considered establishing a direct to consumer channel in the past and decided against it, now is really that time to reconsider. Um, that's why we believe so strongly in, in sampling because you build that bond of reciprocity. You give the consumer that free product and they feel a sort of um, tie to your brand, uh, an affiliation, if you will, uh, that they really, you know, you went that extra step for them and you really cared about them. And they're gonna remember that the next time they're either shopping around online or they're in store. So talking about, you know, CPG brands, again, once the value of first party consumer data, uh, much more than just in marketing, you know, this consumer information is obviously crucial for things like new product development, uh, which is going to be really important right now, because pretty much all of the insights we had prior to the pandemic are, are null and void. Uh, and collecting that information it, that's fresh and new and current is going to be vital right now to know exactly how your consumers are feeling. Uh, pricing strategies, uh, product assortment, retail partner negotiations, um, demand planning, and many other areas, all, all are impacted by this you know, first party consumer data that's so important and such a big driver. And so digital product sampling is a great strategy to gain access to first party data. Unlike most user targeting systems, which are deterministic, uh, Sampler's data set is 100% first party declarative uh, and self-reported. So you, you're able to build a direct path to get to know your consumers uh, beyond just transactional data and, you know, better keep up with their changing needs and behavior. So, you know, taking a look at the insights you collect during a program, being able to discover things like why your consumers choose your brand over others, uh, or which of your products they like, why, you know, or which they enjoy best, uh, can really help det you to detect important patterns and make every sampling dollar count. You know, you can start to uncover answers to important questions like, who your consumers even are, uh, you know, what what age, what demographic, um, lifestyle, dietary preferences, and once again, super importantly, shopping habits, uh, why they choose your brand over others, uh, you know, what retail or what retail stores they shop at more most often. Having that information is vital, um, you know, in building the right retailer partnerships. There there may be places that your consumers, your target consumers, are shopping that you hadn't even thought of yet. That might be a great place um, to get on the shelves at. Uh, how likely are they to recommend your product? Um, what is their purchase intent? All of these things uh, can be put back into your sales and marketing efforts and even help redefine your targeted audience. Uh, if growing retail distribution is important to you, for example, uh, you can look at re retailer specific data. So again, where consumers shop most often uh, and use that information to support conversations with retailers um, to further prove the demand for your product. So it works on both sides of the business. Uh, number three, so a, a recent Google study showed uh, that the largest CPGs have databases of CRM and site data that are on average one-tenth the size of the databases of their retail peers. Um, this disparity means that a lot of brands, um, you know, are the, there is an opportunity to capture and action consented consumer data, um, but it remains untapped. And so uh, consider this, 
offering a super high value incentive, like a product sample, uh, typically drives about a five to 10 times increase in conversion to CRM. Um, once again, that's that, that touching on that reciprocity uh, not only helps you target more specific demographics in the future, but it really also helps you plan more effective remarketing strategies. So by understanding more about your consumer's demographics, psychographics, behavior, and lifestyle, you can really personalize the communication and improve your overall consumer experience as they move along through the funnel. And these valuable tidbits of information arm you with the insights you really need to personalize your content build targeted email campaigns and effectively guide consumers through every step of the shopper journey. Um, and that, that segmentation, that personalization uh, isn't a nice to have anymore. Consumers expect it uh, and they need it. it. That's what's gonna get them through to conversion. They want that remarketing strategy that can really, uh, that makes them feel like the brand really knows who they are, that really understands them um, and is highly curated. So, you know, Let's look at what this kind of looks like um, back on the, you know, user experience uh, for sampler. This is what things can look like after a sampling program, which is just as important as a sampling program itself. Um, follow up coupon incentives uh, for the first purchase, whether to drive them in store or to your e-com platform. Uh, follow up survey to capture insights post trial. Ratings and reviews, which are so important to have. Um, an option to syndicate them on e-commerce channels or to e-commerce channels rather, um, and pixel users to retarget on social. Again, all of these things go so far past just the sampling experience itself um, and really build that bridge for a long lasting, strong relationship with your consumers or potential consumers. Number four, so collecting ratings and reviews to drive sales. So all of us know ratings and reviews can be super, super powerful drivers in consumer spending. Uh, and when shopping for any type of item, consumers, I myself, often turn to online reviews to help them make their buying decision. Uh, for many brands, it can take sig a significant amount of time, effort, and budget to generate a really sufficient amount of reviews. Um, and one of the primary uses for digital product sampling is the ability to ask your consumers for valuable feedback. What did they think of the product? Would they recommend it? How does it compare to other brands they've tried? Is there anything in particular they would change about it? All of these questions are so valuable to be answered right from the mouth of your consumers. Uh, and you know, all useful information that you can bring back to your product development. Once again, your marketing and sales efforts. Um, with Sampler, you can easily syndicate all of the ratings and reviews you collect during your program to your e-commerce website, helping you build trust and credibility at the point of purchase. So it, once again, your sampling dollars are not only working to engage consumers in a memorable way, but also sustaining a steady flow of consumer feedback. So you can start to see just how much of the marketing mix can be combined when you go digital uh, and you can really build that journey from start to finish for your consumer that is highly personalized um, and highly collaborative. It's a two-way street. They feel they can speak to you. Um, and something we often say is, yes, direct to consumer is important. Consumers want direct to brand. They want to know that they can give you the feedback, that it's not falling on deaf ears, and that there is someone who will listen. Um, and that's how you really build that memorable experience and that long-lasting relationship with consumers. And another note here is we know that one in four consumers who get a free sample leave a review of the product. Um, this is through, you know, sampler data that we have. And by adding a sampling CTA to your current marketing channels, like your digital ads or influencer marketing campaigns, you can populate ratings and reviews quickly for both new and established products. So there's so many valuable insights, trends and patterns that can uh, really help you with product development. Um, and again, personalization as we discussed. Um, so something, you know, really cool that we actually just uh, have launched and introduced as our latest tool uh, is actually letting you derive insights from thousands of reviews very quickly and determine whether the sentiment of your consumer feedback is predominantly positive, neutral, or negative. Um, for example, if you're a skincare company and you recently launched a hydrating face cream, how many of your consumers actually considered it a hydrating product? Uh, by using your search bar, you can sort through all of your reviews and quickly get a report of every review mentioning the word hydrated, for example. Um, and, the set in the, and the sentiment column right next to it tells you whether the review is positive, neutral, or negative, all of which are equally as important. Um, it, obviously, you want to get positive 
uh, reviews, of course, or positive sentiment, but imagine there's something negative that they're associating a keyword that they're associating with your product that you didn't even think about that would be really important to know to know of and avoid in your product descriptions uh in just your website copy as a whole in your next marketing campaign uh super super important insights that you can gain from this uh if you targeted consumers with dry skin did they react positively to the hydrating product or did the majority feel it had the opposite effect um, and if so why those are all key pieces of information that would take hours of time to comb through manually. And so, um, you know, your program can become a consumer feedback goldmine for product improvement recommendations. Uh, you know, you've built this direct line of communication with consumers who are actively engaging with your product. Uh, you can better understand the why behind the consumer feedback. Consumer feedback is great, but if you can't dig into the why, it's, it's, it's not actionable. And so, you know, with these insights, you can iterate quicker, you can make your products better with each iteration. This is a great way to get early market feedback for innovation, a uh, great way to make sure your products are tested with real consumers before launching at scale. Um, and something that, you know, this can do as opposed to getting in-person feedback and with any of your exper experiential marketing activations is it's recorded. It's all of it's in one place easy to digest, easy to sift through. Um, if you're getting ad hoc feedback um, directly from someone who's walked up to your in-store in -store sampling booth um, and tried your product, either that brand ambassador isn't gonna translate that information back to you. Um, either way, it's gonna get lost in the shuffle and you will have no idea who said it. It'll, you won't be able to tie that directly to a specific consumer. Um, and so when a product also has multiple flavors or variations, it can really help to compare performance across different SKUs, uh, allow you to optimize your marketing spend and bet against the products that consumers actually really, really love uh, and improve the products your consumers aren't, aren't so sure about. Uh, and so last one. So lastly, digital product sampling does uh, really help boost the effectiveness of your current ad spend. So once again, I'm sure this has been a massive channel for all of us here over the last year and a half because ultimately half of our channels and our mix were nixed. Um, so it was one that a lot of us doubled down on. Uh, and so, you know, you obviously want to make sure that you're spending the dollars you're spending are, are giving you a return. You're getting the most out of them, um, and getting something out of them rather than them. What it can feel like sometimes to us marketers is it just goes out into the ether and you don't really see the return on that. And so offering that free sample incentive, uh, as a call to action on your website uh, or your ads can drive up to seven times higher conversion to CRM registration uh, as per our data and uh, in comparison to a digital ad or CTA with, with no incentive. So by reinvesting your media spend in a digital sampling program, for example, you can achieve the same or better acquisition metrics all while having your target consumer actually experience the product. So uh, let's look at how that actually happens, which I, I think it would be good to, you know, just quickly walk you through that. So here's an example of an ad where, um, you know, the Mio, for example, uh, the has a try now button underneath, takes to, you to this Mio branded experience. Um, it's beautiful and looks like it matches the brand and everything. Um, they're able to click on the, the CTA at the bottom with the connect with sampler, uh, answer any questions about themselves. Um, and based off of the targetability that Mio determined prior to the sampling program, those who fit their target segment will be matched with that sample. And those consumers that do get that sample fill out their shipping address and get it shipped to their front door, which is super easy and low lift for, for the consumer. And they get a free product right to their doorstep. What's better than that? So that's all I have today. Uh, I'd love to answer any questions if anyone has any. We do. We have some questions coming in for you already. Um, as a reminder, you can put your questions into the Q&A panel and we'll start going through this now. So let's see. Our first question is from Charlotte. She says, how does digital sampling help you stay in tune with consumers? Great question, Charlotte. Thank you for asking that. So um, a really big part of what digital product sampling is, is continuing the conversation with consumers. Um, a big, actually the reason why Sampler was started was the fact that if you're in store and you walk up and try a sample and walk away, there's no way to have a relationship with that brand or that consumer. It ends right there with the sample and you never know anything else after that. And so um, on that thought was, or that finding was really where Sampler was started was 
building that relationship uh, for the brand to continue the conversation with consumers. So anyone who samples your product, uh, it, you, you get their email data. They can opt in to hear from your brand after they've tried your sample. Uh, and you get that list at the end of your sampling program with Sampler. Uh, and you can put that in your, your CRM platform for any future marketing campaigns, uh, any email drips that you may have. Um, and what's great is you get all, all of the information about them, about what they answered. And so you can start to personalize and really segment uh, the different types of campaigns that you're doing, which is, is obviously huge. Uh, and, and continue to give them more incentives if you so choose. Uh, drive them into store, as, as I said. So um, the, the great thing about Sampler is it's really just the beginning of the relationship. Um, the sample itself is really just a means to, to spark that relationship with that consumer for the long term. Excellent. Another question here from Cynthia. She says, how do strategies for digital sampling and creator marketing vary for smaller and emerging, emerging brands? And what advice do you have on that? Good question. I think it depends on what your objective is. So uh, a lot of the emerging brands that we work with uh, really want, you know, awareness. And so what's great is we have, you know, um, a, a very large audience of millions um, and a, a very, very engaged audience uh, that we can get your product in front of that you, you may never have gotten in front of before. Um, they're, they've signed up specifically to try samples that match their lifestyle. Uh, and so they're high intent. They're, you know, they've opted in themselves, um, so they're really excited. And most of them are chomping at the bit to give feedback and ratings and reviews. Uh, and so, you know, I think it really, once again, depends if you're a massive brand who maybe already has your own following, uh, you may be looking to engage with your own audience. But uh, with our with smaller brands, you are able to get in front of brand new audience or brand new consumers through our audience. Um, and, and that's one of the big reasons why some of the smaller uh, emerging brands work with us because we are almost that blend of an influencer marketing pro uh, program and a sampling program all in one. Yeah, excellent. Uh, we have some technical questions here. Is the sample box with multiple brands in it or just your brand? Uh, great question. We have both models. So if you prefer to be in your own box, you can do that as a fully uh, branded program. Uh, we also have a multi-branded box uh, where you are, it's a little more cost effective because you share on shipping costs with the other brands. We do still promise category exclusivity. Um, so you'll never be beside any of your competitors, uh, but you are able to share on that, um, that efficiency of cost. Another technical question since we're getting technical, how would this work with a frozen product? Uh, we do actually do free product coupons. So we can drive them in store which tends to be the common one. Um, and once again, our audience is really, really engaged. Uh, so that tends to be a, a successful program that a lot of frozen and beverage companies run with us. Excellent. Okay, Casey is asking, what are your thoughts on in-store product sampling and a digital campaign running concurrently? Totally. Uh, that's actually what we mostly, that's what we suggest most of the time because they do have different benefits. Um, if you're looking to just do one right now, if you're um, if you have budget constraints because of all the market trends we discussed, uh, I obviously I'm biased, but uh, digital sampling covers way more of your marketing mix. You get way more bang for your buck and a whole bunch more um, activations uh, than you would with an in store. In store is strictly to that one store. Digital sampling is to the whole globe. Um, and once again, it's mixing influencer marketing, it's mixing um, ad spend, it's mixing um, the targetability of programmatic advertising all in one. Um, that being said, if you have the budget to do both, that's an excellent strategy. That way you're getting to reach people in store when they're making those snap buy decisions. Um, but at the same time, you can also, they can go home and see you online and say, oh yeah, that's the brand I saw in store. Oh, maybe they have more things that I would like and you get to capture that CRM data. So if you can do a blended, that's a great approach in the way that you would with other advertising, the way we talk about you know, traditional advertising versus digital advertising, the ultimate goal or utopia is really to have that blended strategy of both. Okay. Right, another question here, could a digital sampling, could a digital sampling program insights then be integrated into a remarketing campaign and how does that work? Uh, digital public, yes, absolutely. So uh, every brand gets a dashboard uh, with real-time analytics and insights about how their sampling program is doing. Uh, again, everything from uh, the you know average age of uh, people claiming your product to you know again where they shop, all that information. If you had specifically 
wanted to add a question in about skin type, you'll get that information back as well on top of obviously the really, really valuable email addresses of those who have opted in to get your, or to stay in touch with you. You'll be able to upload that into your marketing automation platform um, and then use all of those insights to make really, really, really personalized follow-up remarketing campaigns on top of all of the sentiment analysis and sort of, um, you know, analyzing the positive, negative, neutral keywords associated with your product. That is, that is gold for a marketer to know maybe there's a word that they use for your product or your category that you had no idea that they use. Right there, that, that's already fueling your SEO strategy that you need to rank for words that you didn't know you needed to rank for. Adding those words into your product descriptions on your website, adding it into your social post copy, all of that gets fueled by everything you can learn from a digital sampling program. Excellent. All right. I want to remind people, send your questions. I am trying to look at the chat box. I know questions are coming in there. If you can put them in the Q&A panel, it just makes sure that as these chats are coming through, I don't miss anything. So we have a lot of questions coming in for you, Kelly. So let's keep to it. What is a typical quantity required for sampling? Uh, oh, great question. There isn't a typical quantity. Um, it can really range. Again, we work with every brand of every size. Um, you can start with as few as a thousand, uh, go as, as many as a hundred thousand if you wanted to. Um, a sweet spot is usually between five and 10,000 to start with if it's your first program and you're a little budget conscious. Um, that way you're getting enough data collection and also you know CRM data collection that it's worth your while. Um, but that being said, you can still really get, have you know, a ton of success and a ton of you know, return on you know, squeezing as much out of your budget with as few as a thousand samples. All right. Can you provide examples on what type of insights brands collect during a program? Great question. Uh, yeah, so I touched on it a little bit before, but um, everything from that demographic data. So really, really, really understanding, uh, you know, geolocation. Uh, it, let's say you run a U.S. specific program. Uh, is it people in New York who are more likely to claim your product versus, um, you know, Florida? Or is it, you know, where are, where is your product resonating most? Um, is it, you know, again, the age, different types of skin, like skin concerns, anything around, you know, any preferences, shopping preferences, um, you know, we can ask them what stores are their favorite stores to go to? Do they prefer big box stores or smaller stores? All that kind of information uh, is stuff that the, the brand can actually access during their digital sampling program on top of all of the insights around their specific program of how many samples have moved, how quickly they've moved, how many are left, uh, how many you know ratings and reviews, on top of all of the keyword analysis um, and sentiment analysis that that I referenced earlier. So there's tons and tons of great stuff um, that can fuel an entire annual marketing strategy. That's amazing. Uh, another question here: Do ads with digital sampling offers perform better? And do you have any numbers to uh, help illustrate that? Do you add, uh, yes, so definitely ads with digital sampling offers perform better. Um, I put them in the slides earlier, but I can reference them. Um, we'll post it on social uh, about how much, actually I can go back and find that slide here if I'm still sharing. Um, yeah, five, five times higher ad recall uh, than without sampling CTAs, as well as seven times uh, more likely for a consumer to complete an extended profile with the sampling CTA. Excellent. Question here, I'm, I'm in shopper marketing. Would I be able to target consumers who shop at a specific store, which I think you kind of touched on, so maybe you can elaborate on that. Absolutely. Um, we work with brands all the time on that. So some may be specific to a store like Kroger or Trader Joe's. Uh, they know that their product is, is stocked there most. 100% uh, that's something we can do. We can also do geolocation. So if you're focused on a program uh, in a specific state and retailer, we can do that as well. All right. How do you select the influencers and the platforms they share product information on? So, uh, yeah, we actually don't work with influencers themselves. It's our own, it's our own following. It's our own database. Um, these are consumers who have found us, uh, and are very engaged with us. Um, we do have partners, uh, within, uh, the media. So network partners, um, which is one arm of our business. So uh, you think of a men's journal or an InTouch Weekly. Um, they are our partners and have their own branded box, like an InTouch 
uh, VIP box style. Uh, and th those partnerships just allow us to reach greater audiences, um, have really big reach. Our reach is about 59 million right now. Um, and so, you know, that in that arm we do, that's the closest thing I would say we have to influencer right now. Um, but in general, we, we just have a big following for people who love Sampler. Awesome. Okay, Cindy says, I'm in digital marketing. Could you give an example of how Sampler has helped a brand with marketing metrics? Ooh, good question. Um, I, I'll have to pull up. I could send, Cindy, great question. I want to send you some specific numbers. So let me get in touch with you after the webinar. Um, but there are definitely, when speaking with marketing metrics, I can give you a looser example right now. We are often helping brands, uh, again, grow their CRM list. That's a really, really, really big one. Um, boost the number of uh, ratings or the average rating they have on an, uh, syndicated e-commerce sites. Um, we also, you know, are able to get that, uh, you know, purchase intent data. Uh, we're able to, you know, again, increase the, the advertising uh, effectiveness with a boosted sampling CTA, all those things. Um, we have actually helped brands who have their own influencer marketing campaigns boost the efficiency of their influencer marketing campaigns with the influencer saying, click below uh, to try a sample. So there's different ways that really what it is, is adding that sampling experience for the user at the end of the day uh, is just going to supercharge any of your current marketing channels whatsoever. Once again, I want to get you more concrete numbers. So I'll be sure to send some case studies over to you after this. Excellent. Keep those questions coming. We have so many. Can you target uh, specific geographies? And also, can you target people who have identified preferences such as being vegan? Yes, that's actually a very popular one for us. Um, dietary preferences is one of the most popular targets that uh, we work with brands on and geolocation 100%. We can target any location that you're looking for across North America. Um, and so it can be city specific, it can be state specific, whatever you're looking for. Um, but yes, 100%, we can do that. Excellent. Another question here. We are a small business and we're looking to drive local consumers into our store. Would Sampler help with a very local campaign or is it largely a nationwide program? It can be local. Yeah. So if you put in targetability and parameters around wanting a local specific geolocator, once again, 100% um, Sampler can work with that. That's, and that's what's so great about, you know, the malleability of digital sampling is it's, it really can be tailored to whatever your needs are. And we have someone looking for a little bit more information on Sampler's audience. Yes. So as I mentioned, we have a reach of about 59 million. Um, and they're across, again, all of North America. We have a pretty equal representation in both countries. Um, a lot of them um, have a higher education. Uh, a lot of them are parents. Uh, most of them are a primary shopper in their household. Uh, I think there's a very large amount of them uh, are pet owners. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm happy to send uh, kind of a, a write up of, uh, of, of the exact breakdown of our audience if you're looking for specific metrics. Um, but that's what's great about our audience is that we really can tell you as granularly as where, how many, what percentage of them shop at what store um, and how many of them have dogs uh, and where they live. All that kind of stuff is, is super fun for us to collect and beneficial to the, our end audience user who's looking for a really tailored, personalized experience. All right, question here. Does it cost more to keep an actual customer or to gain a new one? And can we digital samp can we digitally sample every product? So yeah, you can do as many products as you, you'd like. They would be different um, campaigns, if you will, but you, we have that all the time. Brands do multiple products at once, um, different SKUs. Often they'll try test different flavors, especially with new product launches. Um, but in general, yes, 100%, you can test different ones. Um, I think it depends on your strategy. That's a good question. Um, the great thing about Sampler is that, you know, if you are looking at your cost per acquisition and it is more expensive, to get a new, acquire a new user than it, or a new uh, consumer rather than re-engage old ones, you can use your sampling program for both. We actually have a lot of brands who use us as kind of a brand advocacy sampling program for people that they know that are highly high value, that have purchased them before, but maybe dropped off or that are really strong brand advocates already, but they wanna keep fueling that relationship. They'll do a brand advocacy sampling program. Um, 
and really make sure that those people get a free sample. They feel taken care of. Once again, there's that direct to brand relationship. They can give product feedback and really feel special. Uh, so it really depends on what you're looking for. I can't speak to your specific uh, cost per acquisition uh, versus, you know, uh, old versus new. Um, but once you, you know, do, running a simple calculation of, of CAC LTV could, could probably give you that answer. All right. And are the sample boxes shipped in cuts, uh, customizable sizes or is it a standard box for all samples? So if you are part of the multi-branded box, it's standard. Um, if you run a fully branded program, you can get your logo put on the box um, and an insert if you so choose that says more about your product. All right, so any more questions, keep them coming. I have a question, just I was on your website and for anybody who wants more information, there's a lot of testimonials on there, brand testimonials, so much information on there to help familiarize you more with Sampler. But one of the, um, we have a lot of retailers also in our audience at Whole Foods Magazine and one of the brand testimonials on your website talks about how Sampler helped the brand streamline their demo process. And uh, she said it helped them align with one marketing program. So that they could support all of their nationwide retail partners. So I thought it would be nice to just touch on more about how retailers are, are supported when a brand is going through Sampler. Uh, what, what do you mean by retail, how retailers are supported? Well, so, she said that, that using Sampler has helped them better support their retail partners. Oh, and yes, okay. So there's a lot, of, um, a lot of the data that you collect in a Sampler program is directly related and usable with your retail partners to show traction, to show um, target audience, to show all of those different things. Once again, uh, referencing, you know, if you have multiple SKUs, um, having this information about which SKUs are high performing uh, can help you get on the shelves or on a priority spot on shelves. Um, and, you know, all of this data is transparent, right? You can share that directly with retailers um, and it builds a, a better connection, a better relationship rather than just, you know, trying to say, yes, people love our product, you've got proof in the pudding and you can show that to the retailer themselves. Therefore, they feel a lot more confident putting you on their shelves. Excellent. All right, any more questions? I know we're, we have a few more minutes if people have more questions um, or is there any other point that you really wanna drive home, Kelly, before we wrap up? Uh, I don't think so. I think the big thing is, uh, <sighs> it's a crazy time for marketers it's every dollar counts the more you can make your spend do five things at once rather than just one uh the better you're going to set yourself up for a more successful year um and you can adapt whatever budget you're working with to squeeze the most out of it you know um rather than just looking at all separate channels as different investments things like digital sampling allow you to take five channels and squeeze them into one budget so that you are getting more bang for your buck. You are being a lot more efficient with your spend. Um, and once again, we're a very malleable solution. Uh, whatever your needs are, we have a big team of experts who actually are there to curate a very specific sampling program just for you. So happy Excellent. to hear from anyone who, uh, who's looking to, to launch a sampling program. Why don't you um, put your next slide up? I know it has some of your, your contact information, tell people how they can, where you can follow, where you can get more information. Um, we've covered a lot of ground today. I think it's clear that this is a strong benefit. And uh, any additional questions? I know that Kelly and the team at Sampler will be happy to assist. You can reach out to them. Um, the, the website is there in the chat. So you can follow that along, click right through there today. And I just wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Thanks to Kelly for all this valuable information. Thank you to Sampler for putting this on and sharing uh, this and everybody have an excellent day. Thank you. Thanks everyone.